I think a lot of people would probably ask me what happened since 2016 because that was kind of when all of my bigger results kind of came around. I think that was a time when I was really just kind of going at it all in, trying to figure out what I wanted out of the sport. I wasn't really sure about, uh, you know, I was improving. Every time I raced, I was just getting a little bit faster and I wasn't really sure where the end was. Um, and so I was really motivated and excited to train hard and get that uh, extra little bit of performance. And uh, kind of as the year progressed, I kind of realized that it was time to start thinking about whether or not I wanted to take my pro card. This episode of the Smart Athlete Podcast is brought to you by Solpre. Skincare for athletes. Whether you're in the gym, on the mats, on the road, or in the pool, we protect your skin so you're more comfortable in your own body. To learn more, go to soulpre.com. Today on this episode of the Smart Athlete Podcast, my guest has done quite a few things. In 2016, he was USA Triathlon's Sprint National Champion. He also booked a 70.3 win that year. Um, to be able to do both is actually something pretty special. Currently, he races for Team Everyman Jack and is in the middle of his PhD in combustion dynamics at Georgia Tech. Welcome to the show today, Chris Douglas. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Chris, um, having your accomplishments read out, which I'm sure is only like a, you know, a short snippet because I don't want to be too much of a cyber stalker for you. Um, how do you like... So, like, uh, there's a couple more 2016. You know, how do you look back on that? And, like, what do you think about what you're doing today? Like, are you still trying to capture that kind of performance you had then? Are you still at the same form? Like, how do you feel about your racing then compared to now or a couple of years later? I think a lot of people would probably ask me what happened since 2016. Because that was kind of when all of my bigger results kind of came around. I think that was a time when I was really just kind of going at it all in, trying to figure out what I wanted out of the sport. I wasn't really sure about, uh, you know, I was improving. Every time I raced, I was just getting a little bit faster and I wasn't really sure where the end was. Um, and so I was really motivated and excited to train hard and get that uh, extra little bit of performance. And uh, kind of as the year progressed, I kind of realized that it was time to start thinking about whether or not I wanted to take my pro card. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like what I do for my PhD. And um, I, I don't really see a way where I could continue, or I didn't really see a way where I could continue um, to really push um, at the, the way I was um, in training um, for years and years as I would need to, and also continue to push in my PhD um, as I would need to, to progress in that. Um, so I kind of, kind of came to a crux where I had to say, which one do I want more? Um, and I decided that, <clears throat> well, I, I was helped by an injury, I guess. Um, but I, <laughs> I eventually decided, uh, that, uh, you know, I, I am a PhD, I'm a student first. Um, and I, I'm not closing off the idea of eventually pursuing, uh, a, I guess, a fuller career in triumph i don't know I, I do it for fun um and if yeah. i think i think uh you know i could see myself having a lot lot more fun in the pro field if i feel like i'm re i'm ready for it and i can actually you know I, there's something kind of sacred about <laughs> calling yourself a pro triathlete I don't, I don't think if i if i were ever a pro triathlete i would not be a professional triathlete i would be an elite triathlete where i would have a license to go out and push myself with people who could really you know whoop me and show me what a real triathlete is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I if I get to that point where I think I can, you know, push myself in training to the way where I can kind of benefit from that, um, then I'm going to spring on it. But uh, as long as as long as I'm doing this, I don't really see that being a productive way. I think it'll just kind of drive me down in both my PhD and in uh, training if I'm not able to do both. And I know that, I mean, the, the decision between the two, it, it seems like it's always tough. I don't know if you know um, Cecilia Davis-Hayes. So she was the 
Todd referred me to her, and, and um, she was the national champion for the women's side on the Olympic distance that same year that you won the sprint um, the sprint championship. And I talked to her um, in another episode, and so she had just finished medical school, and like she had kind of put med school on pause a little bit and was like doing research while she's racing pro and is kind of struggling with the same thing. Like, does she continue? Does she not? Like, you know, how, how do you parse out all those things? So I just think it's kind of interesting to figure out, you know, where everybody's priorities lie. You know, I, I, I personally spent the last basically eight years trying to be a pro and I'm not as fast as like you and Todd. It was more of a personal challenge, but I, like I, I can certainly sympathize with the idea about being, like a pro being kind of a sacred thing in in a similar aspect. Like I I was, I didn't think about it in the sense that I would be a pro and earn money. Like I had never had, I never had the disillusion that I would earn money. Exactly. (laughs) I was just like, I just here to work as hard to get my ass kicked (laughs) as I can. Like that was the whole goal. Um, So yeah, I mean, well, like, so what, with the injury, was it like, something major or it was it was a knee injury i actually okay. it's, it's been a couple of years and i i don't remember exactly the details but i remember i wasn't able to run for a while and then mm-hmm. i also uh, i guess i kind of took that kind of hard and kind of backed off of everything even though really i could have kept swimming and probably cycling to some degree um, and i kind of backed off everything a little bit um, and then when i realized I wasn't really recovering from running as quickly as I'd hoped. Um, I decided to start swimming more and then I started hurting my shoulder. Um, and so I, then I actually had to back off of that and it kind of just started a cascade of a few things, which kind of took me through, uh, 20, uh, actually, uh, this was the kind of middle beginning of 2017. Um, and my 2017 year was probably one of my worst years last year. I, I didn't, do as many quite as many races but i had some good results um 2017 was definitely the kind of the struggle year Uh, and actually i I was on everyman jack that year and i remember uh talking with rich and he was like man if you hadn't had a good uh 2016 you'd be off the team because it was it was a i i really underperformed in uh both in racing and in the balance i learned a lot of lessons that year which is, I mean, it was important and it's helped me since then, but uh, it was not a not a proud year for me, I guess. This is something I'm kind of curious about because I'm not, with my own kind of allegiances as far as I have, you know, I have a skincare business, which doesn't directly compete with EMJ, but like I couldn't be a part of it because of that. I'm kind of curious, like how, like how did you get hooked up with them or like how did that all start? So it, it started because uh, I knew a guy through the collegiate racing scene, uh, Steve Mantel. Um, yeah. Which you may have heard of. Yeah. Um, and I I'm, I'm talked with him a little bit about it and uh, it just seemed like it was a really good opportunity for him. Um, and I honestly didn't know anything about the brand until I talked to him. But after I talked to him, I went out and, you know, bought a thing of shampoo and liked it. And that was just kind of my introduction to, to what it is. Did some research online. And eventually found a couple more people to talk to. But my first like real experience with the team was actually when I was on the team um, at camp. And that was just like, it was like finding home. It was, uh, the guys in that team are so, I don't know, organic. Like, I don't know, I, I've met, I've gone to so many races where, you know, you get beat by someone or you beat someone and you talk to them after the race and you're just like, man, I just don't really like that person. Um, you know, they... Either there's just something about the way they their attitude towards the sport that kind of grinds your gears. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like I've maybe encountered that once or twice in the team. And uh, there's no names that stick out to me. But I mean, it's kind of weird, right? Because everyone who's at the level of the point where they are, you know, most of the guys on EMJ um, either have gone to Kona or um, probably could go, well, maybe not to Kona, but to the world championship in their, you know, preferred distance. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say exactly, but uh, I don't know. It's just everyone in that position is, at least in their head, super, you know, not humble, <laughs> super proud and, you know, aware that they are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
it takes someone like an additional layer of I don't know what you'd call it. it it's it's kind of uh, I, I I don't know how to describe it. It's just you know the ability to um, not really be humble because like deep inside you know that you're good and you're you're able to compete with people who might be you know better than you on some days and worse than you on others but you're able to convince yourself that on that day you're the best um and also to immediately after the race to turn that off and just you know recognize that neither of you is a better person because of it um and that everyone's kind of deserving of that respect and um the relationships that you can get by treating the sport that way where um you kind of push yourself to being the best you can on race day but also respecting everyone else and respecting their pushing and watching them improve and get injured and spend a year in like 2017 mm -hmm. but who knows what i don't know just uh it, it it's made the the whole triathlon experience for me a lot more of like a me kind of in like a community of like-minded people rather than just like me going to a race to do it and i i think i mean you can tell me if i'm off base here i know i've met uh, just like you said very like-minded people in the community it's almost just this very odd thing where i've kind of felt i don't want to say a loner because i've I, you know i've had plenty of connections with people growing up but just there's some kind of mentality that's like this a little bit crazy but also that like ambitious and strong and, and not just a physical sense it's like that that ability where like you said you have to think that you're the best but at the same time there's this extra layer of strength where you are almost empowered by somebody else doing well yeah like you're not jealous of them doing well you're like that's awesome like because i think it's because you understand the suffering that they went through to achieve that even if you weren't able to yeah. like you can appreciate the sacrifices that they made to get there that's one of the great things about try it's not like a sport where you can you i don't know i feel like because like when i was little i used to play basketball mm -hmm. and i i didn't really like basketball so much because i was not on like a school team i was on like a youth center team um and it always felt like i was maybe i wasn't this wasn't you know the sound reason but uh I would always find a way to convince myself that someone else in the team um, had like made the mistake that cost us the game or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the nice things about triathlon is you can't really say that. Uh, you know, people will say, "Oh, you know, there was a bunch of drafting, or uh, I got beaten to swim, or you know, you come up with things." But uh, to really like let go and just kind of say, you know, this is an individual sport and. Um, it's really fun to, to go out there with that mindset that anything that doesn't go right, at the end of the day, it's my fault. In some way, I wasn't prepared for whatever weird conditions may have led to that result. Mm -hmm. But it's always, it's, you can always point at yourself as to why and not being able to look at someone else or point the finger anywhere else is kind of a humbling thing, especially like the first couple times where it happens. I remember my first race, I went into that really cocky. Um, I had started, I started in tries uh, because I was an injured runner. Mm -hmm. um, and I started, I, you know, the whole try basically up until the run, I thought, oh man, you know, I don't care who passes me right now. Cause when we get to the run, I'm going to pass him right back. I'm going so mm -hmm. fast. I'm going to go so fast in the run. And then I got to the run after biking and I just felt so awful. And I just remember thinking, wow, you know, these guys, who even you know the ones behind me are still running way faster than me. I'm like struggling to to keep uh, to keep running sometimes because I wanted to walk so bad, and uh, <laughs> just kind of you know the going through that kind of mental struggle where you're like, wow, you know, I really didn't prepare for this, mm -hmm. and just trying to never feel that way again. I think is the one of the big motivators for training as hard as it takes to to have a good race. Yeah, I know I've definitely felt that. Like the first time I did it at seventy point three, it was at uh, Eagle Man, and not only had I, I so I'd only gotten biked up to maybe fifty fifty five miles, basically the race distance for the bike. Not only that, but it ended up being like ninety three degrees. And that course, I don't know if you've not done that course, but there's no shade on that course, 
So there's no reprieve from the time you get out of the water till the time you cross the finish line. I ended yeah. up in the medical tent. And it was just like, because, you know, I, I too kind of like came to the line. And I was like, like, I'm hot shit. Like, I'm going to get this done today. Yeah. And get my pro card and get it. And it was like, it's a complete mess. And, it, you know, it ended up way off where I wanted to be. And um, it was definitely like, no, you're not as good as you think you are. And, yeah. and there's nobody to blame beside yourself for right. you know not not preparing properly. Exactly. Um, so you were talking about being injured in in college, and I think I had seen that somewhere else. Um, I was kind of curious. It seems like injuries are kind of a common uh, common thread with collegiate runners. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, like, what do you think led to that? Um, I, you know, I, I just always like to hear about like kind of the environment, the culture of yeah. different, different schools and different kind of running clubs and what, what goes on, I guess. All right. Well, I was not like a stellar runner by any means. I was allowed to walk. I, I would say I annoyed the coach enough that he let me walk on the team. Okay. Um, <laughs> just like sent him enough emails, I guess. And he felt, um, bad enough for me that he let me walk on. Um, and I actually had a pretty a solid first year considering my ability. I was improving um, and I was enjoying myself. I wasn't getting injured. Um, and then right before the first track season, um, we were doing like some pre-workout drills in the field and I stepped in a molehill and it just kind of tweaked my foot weird. And I ended up getting a tear in some of the ligaments in my foot. And that set off just sort of a chain. Of, I mean, that took a long time to heal and that set mm -hmm. off kind of a chain of associated injuries in the other foot and then back in that foot. And I just, uh, I don't think I was ever really a hundred percent healthy for another, that, that was the only cross country season I had. And I tried a couple other track races, but I was never really like a hundred percent healthy mm -hmm. for any of them. Um, so after I was injured for a year, um, and then I had kind of a mostly healthy summer and then right at the end of the summer, something else came back. Um, and I decided to walk off after that point. Um, but as far as, uh, like I've heard horror stories and I, I know some horror stories from people who I knew in college, um, mm -hmm. who I ran with in college, um, where they were just kind of driven to the point where, you know, they, they couldn't help but be injured. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't really like an asset to the team. So I wasn't really pushed, I think to that level where I felt like I had to, you know, put myself at risk to do it. I just happened to get unlucky and get injured, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not like that doesn't happen. It, it's just kind of the 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 way I think that that sport may you know it should, maybe it shouldn't work that way. But I, it's not for me to decide how it should work. It's just kind of how it works in the current mm -hmm. system. Is like you got to have X runners and. Uh, if you're going to, even if you do everything perfect and your training plan is, you know, just right and no one's overtraining and all that stuff, there's still fluke injuries that just happen. Um, yeah. And you have to have a, a, you know, stable full of runners that can go out there and do it if one person can't. So I think that kind of maybe makes it worse, but uh, it's also just part of the nature of the sport. I mean, football, basketball, athletes have injuries it's just kind of the way it works and the ncaa definitely has its problems but I, I i think that most of the athletes who are getting those injuries would say that you know they were doing what they wanted to do and they got hurt not i don't think it was you know their coach was like you know in in the general case of course mm -hmm. specific cases but like in general, the interactions I've had, I've, it's felt like people got hurt because they were doing what they liked and they got unlucky or they overtrained or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I would not blame my coach for anything that happened to me. I, I'd, I'd credit him for giving me a chance to walk on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, I, I, so I, I mean, I was injured various amounts of ways from freak injuries. Um, I always attribute this particular injury. It was right before um, conference my senior year cross country like pulled my hamstring it's a week of conference yeah. and that essentially prevented me from making the national championship the only time i would have you know i was fast enough to make the national championship but there are other times where 
we had a culture of we had a different coach from my freshman year to my sophomore year. We changed coaching staff and like the distance group was very, very small, yeah. meaning there was me and one other guy and then some girls that had mostly walked on. So um, there's kind of not as many serious people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had gotten injured and the coach was so used to listening to, I call it fishing for workouts. Some of the girls would, be like, oh, coach, I don't want to do that today. Let's do something else. Like so much of that. Wow. Yeah. That he didn't want to. He didn't believe me when I said I was injured, and I ended up like basically running myself lopsided, where you could see the difference in the size of my legs, because I was like, like I was serious about it. So I was like, you tell me go run eight miles, I go run eight miles. If I got to limp through eight miles, I'll I'll do that. And that was just, I wouldn't blame him in the sense that i would be like oh he caused it but it was this kind of interesting mix of culture that created the environment for that to happen yeah so i'm always just like you know and i know i've heard of other coaches throwing people into 100 mile weeks when they're not really prepared for it and that leads to injuries so it's always just kind of curious to me you know what led to that for everybody because it's always different um just kind of i don't know interest of mine having been injured so many times Yeah, I, the, this was again based on my experience, so I didn't mean to like say that everyone. No, 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 no. I just kind of yeah. share my own background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, 